I've got my server set up in my DMZ to install the bits that I want. I want the web platform installer which you can download from Microsoft and that's going to put all the bits on that we want. Simply download it and run it. Accept the Euler and install. Click finish and now you'll be able to launch the web platform installer. Now this does quite a lot of different add-ons and bits and bobs for IIS so the simplest way to find what we're looking for is URL rewrite is the first one that we want so do a search for URL and there it is at the top click add and then we want ARR, which is application application request routing. We want version three, not the one at the top that says 2.5. Click install. Click I accept. And I've sped this up for the sake of the video, but it will put all the bits and dependencies that it needs on in the right order. Click finish, and then we can exit out of there. Now open administrative tools and open the IIS management console and if you expand out the server name you will see now that there is another subfolder there called server farms which you wouldn't usually see. So if you right click that and create a server farm simply give the server farm a name and then you will have the option to add the IIS servers that are going to be served through this into the server farm. So these are the IIS servers that are on the LAN that have got their content in them. And click finish. Now this very handily sets up all the URL rewriting rules for you and we want everything very basic and simple so just say yes and it will do all the hard work for you. So if you expand that out you'll see in here you can change load balancing, you can change the caching, um, if you were doing anything other than just simple rewriting you can put particular routing rules in here and do SSL offloading etc. Um, this is also a caching engine and caching is on by default so if you add SSDs or NVMEs on here that would be a very good thing. Load balancing by default is set to round robin I'm just going to leave it on its defaults and you can see there's a load distribution algorithm that you can mess with as well to sort of skew if you had a more powerful server etc. Sure Let's just dive onto my other ARR server and I've just set that up exactly the same. It's just sat in the DMZ, it's got exactly the same server farm and it's got exactly the same backend servers upon it ready to go. Now remember both these servers have got an NLB IP address that is presented to the outside world. So over on my web server, apologies if I'm teaching anybody to suck eggs here, I'm sure a lot of you will know how to install IIS, but just set up on my web server and add in the server rule for web server IIS. Add features, and I'm just going to select all the defaults and let it run through. I'm just going to let that tick away in the background, won't take long for that to install. Now on the root of my C drive here I've got a little web page that I'm going to serve. So I'm just going to copy it into the root of the IIS website. Very straightforward, it's just a simple page that says what it's been served from and the server name that it's been served from. Um, I'm just going to change the settings in IIS Manager just to move index.htm to the top of the page serve list 
otherwise I'll probably get the default page rather than the one that I want. Uh, default documents what we're looking for. There it is. I'm just going to move index.htm to the top of the list. And then I'm going to restart IIS services. There we go, that's us done. And let's just make sure that that works locally. Just open a web page and go to localhost, and hopefully I should see that page. Yep, there we go. Just to prove it's not all smoke and mirrors. Now back on my ARR server, I've finished with that now, I can delete that. I'm just going to make sure that I've got connectivity to, from my DMZ to my backend web servers by browsing to them each individually and just making sure that I see the page that I've put on both. There's 14 and the other one you will remember is dot .15. Now I've put a slightly different page on dot .15 just to demonstrate. I've just changed the colour and changed the name just so we know where the pages have been served from so we know they're both different so when we check them from outside the network we should hopefully see pages served from both backend servers so here I am on a client outside the network and I'm going to test connectivity through my um, web farm now if you've got a browser it'll probably cache this so if you hit refresh you might just see exactly the same page again but after a while if you're patient and you refresh you should see pages getting served from each of the back-end web service thanks very much for watching